All right, guys, so there she is, the uh, RS5 Model Sport chassis underneath. This thing is an absolute beauty. I mean, not just because of the uh, carbon fiber and everything, but uh, it really drives absolutely incredible. Uh, it's got a lot of cool things on it, you know, like the uh, hydraulic disc brakes, all four, um, the wonderfully tuned engine. It's uh, tuned by Hobby Center France. Um, and actually this car came here all the way from Europe. Uh, this used to be with me when I was in the UK and now she's here with me in the US as well. I love this kit. This is an older RS5. This is a T13 uh, with a lot of T14 and T15 upgrades along with a bunch of other custom upgrades. Um, I did have a titanium exhaust on here which is actually right over there and I... Uh, Look at the welds on this thing. These exhausts, the titanium, they they just, you know, they're the best sounding and they're the best looking. I did break the tip off, so I put this temporarily there so until I can find someone who can weld titanium because it's not really the easiest to find someone who can uh, weld titanium. It's uh, apparently a little bit more complicated than welding your standard steel. So uh, with that being said, this should answer the question that I always get while driving the chassis with the uh, FG model sport body. Um, I have a few of these FG bodies and you've probably seen these before, but uh, this is again an RS5 model sport uh, race chassis. Um, even though we don't have a racetrack, unfortunately near me, I do drive this and most of these kits that I have to their full potential. Um, we have thankfully some good roads here and uh, yeah, you can really basically use your imagination to create your own racetrack. Unfortunately, you are driving by yourself and there's no, so, you know, there's nobody to like, compete with you or anything. So yeah, it's just really, really beautiful. Um, can't say enough good things about this thing. Um, they really drive amazing because of the size and the weight. People think the uh, fifth scale, they don't really go that fast. And of course, they're not as light as, you know, my 10th scale, 8th scale, 12th scale, whatever. Um, power to weight ratio is always important, but the way the power delivery here happens is just beautiful and the way they change direction is fantastic. And when you see this thing pass you in real life, these things are capable of 70 plus mile an hour easy. I mean, uh, they're really, really fast. And for this weight, something like this, that's weighing, you know, uh, shit, I'm bad with converting to pounds because again, I lived in Europe. So this thing weighs 11 point something kilograms. So you do the math on whatever that is in pounds and uh, it's pretty heavy. It's not a light kit and even though it's fully carbon fiber, but there's a lot of stuff going on here. And to be fair, a lot of the bolts here are titanium, uh, which helps with weight reduction. So uh, your standard kit, you have some kits that weigh 12 pounds, 12, sorry, kilograms plus. And uh, so this thing being at the low 11s is actually um, pretty light and that's with, with fuel. But yeah, just looking at this thing, it's just really, really something. I'm I'm a big, you know, fan of the uh, RS5 platform because they just do a great job. And yes, a lot of people don't need the carbon fiber, especially the ones that race. Some people actually prefer the uh, the flex of aluminum frames versus the carbon, which is more stiff. But uh, like I said, you can loosen some bolts and the connector joints, and uh, that actually helps with the chassis flex and uh, yeah just for me i just love the way they look um they look very realistic to a real race car having something that's a fifth scale like this that's made of entirely basically carbon fiber titanium aluminum things like that and then looking at something that's like a real race car like that it just everything transitions you know anything with an engine i always say this in my videos um I love racing. I love motorsports. I'm obsessed with it. I think about it 24-7. If I'm not able to drive this, I want to be doing something that's related to it. So it's either a motorcycle or an RC car or a quad or something. It just it just has to be involved in something like this. I get I get sick if I'm not doing something like this. It's 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 weird. It's I'm a weird sort of individual, so I tinker with cars. If it's not in the real thing, it's in models. If it's not in models, it's in RC cars. If it's not in RC cars, it's in a motorcycle, an engine. So it, it just, it's all related to me. And uh, again, something that I always say, and I've spoken to tons of racing drivers 
who sometimes, you know, they're not as involved in the RC world as me, but they can understand my point of view and my kind of comment on the connection between, um, you know, having your brain always focused on something like that. Because even at this scale, when you're racing them or driving them, um, you know, hard at their full capacity, you're not sort of relaxing or resting. Your brain is literally fully stimulated. So I've done a few laps that I've created on, on roads. And when you're done, you're actually mentally drained. Almost kind of the same feeling as when you go out in a sports car and you're driving to the limit and you come back and you're like, oh, that was a handful. It happens to me with RC cars because you're so focused and you're trying to get the maximum performance from it all the time your brain consistently gets used to that feeling. So I definitely love RC cars and, and uh, they help me in everything. They help me drive better on the bikes. They help me drive better real cars. It's just something that I think is very great, not just for the actual driving part, but the mechanical part. You, you, you will realize that these things are extremely technical. For example, this differential here is not just your standard, you know, oil diff that you can adjust a little bit. You can adjust everything with this diff. You can adjust how much each individual wheel rotates from the rear. Uh, same thing with the brake bias. You can play with it. You can make it, you know, 70, 30, 70 or 65, 35. It's just crazy. So something that's really important on these kits is the transmitter that I use and the receiver. So on sophisticated kits like this, I like to use this Sanwa M12 for the fact that I can have telemetry. So it's not just that I have the RPM, but I have the engine temperature and the receiver temperature, uh, as well as the brake and throttle percentage and how much you know I can turn to the left, to the right, the percentage. So you have all the inputs in here. You can even do lap times, battery voltage, and let's say the engine temperature gets too hot or the receiver temperature gets too hot. Uh, I have alarms here and it'll let me know when something is going wrong. So this thing is literally like a real car, if not more advanced than some of the cars that I've been in, honestly. So it's super, super awesome. And I, I just, I love these things. I love being able to uh, translate all this stuff through all the scales. It's just wonderful. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna start it now for you and uh, let's see how it sounds and how the telemetry works. So you get the idea, um, just have to talk a bit louder now uh, because I turned on the fan, otherwise I'm going to go crazy with this two-stroke uh, fuel smell. Even though I love it, I just try to limit myself from smelling too much of it in closed doors, So, because I get a lot of it from literally everything. I'm just going to put it back together now, basically just put the tires and wheels back on and uh, the body shell and then just uh, get it ready for another day. So yeah, that's it with the body uncovered. Um, we'll uh, check it out on the road. That's where it's really fun. All right, so I got my uh, favorite body shell on for this thing. It's a custom designed uh, newer version of the DTM. Uh, body. It's basically the newer version of that and you can tell it's uh, it's seen a lot of, you know, drive time. It's not in the most perfect condition because I really do genuinely drive the crap out of this thing. 
And I, I can't tell you how many sets of tires this body shell has seen, probably from 2015, 2016, I've had this car and this body shell. So the fact that it still looks this good is, is a testament to the quality of these things. And I have to give myself a bit of credit. I, uh, I paint them and I put uh, like a lacquer, which is like an aftercoat, which protects the paint. It's kind of like a ceramic coat, but on the other side of, of where the paint is done from under the body. Yeah, it just looks super cool. These vents are also real vents. Uh, these vents are also cut out. Uh, what can I say? Oh yeah, the duct here, I'll show you. This is an actual duct. Probably gonna make that into carbon. Um, try and find a mold so I can make this into a carbon carbon duct. So what I like about fifth scale is that, for example, this body has seen a lot of miles and let's say you, you know, damage some areas which are prone to be damaged. For example, the, the front uh, lower splitter, uh, you just take it apart. It's, it's got bolts and nuts that connect it. So these bodies are really expensive for fifth scale and then you have to paint them and all that stuff. So uh, it's a process. So the fact that they make, you know, the front uh, lip, the lower uh, bumper separate is great because honestly, this is the most area that's prone to damage on these things, um, along with the canards, which are individually replaceable. Um, the newer body shell doesn't have as much canards as the older one. The, the, the older one has plenty on the back over there and and the front as well. So it's uh, it's just, I love them both. I just think the way I designed this body, uh, watching DTM and being a DTM fan, uh, this actually livery is not for the Audi, it's for the uh, BMW. So uh, the fact that they make the Audi uh, shell for this, I uh, I kind of swapped it. I just changed the livery. Yeah, so just looking at this thing, I mean, no wonder it's my uh, favorite body shell for this for this kit, the RS5. It absolutely looks fantastic. It's, it's really a, a very nice looking body and it, it's even better once it starts up and, and makes the noise and all that stuff. And uh, if you think it looks good here, just watching it drive under the sun and on the street, it's, it's, it's even better. And especially because of its scale, it's, it's, it's nuts. All right, so just to put things into perspective with regards to the size, it's pretty difficult to appreciate the size and scale of the fifth scale from behind the camera. Um, and honestly, even now showing you its scale compared to me, which is massive, um, it's still hard to kind of understand really how big these things are um, from behind the camera. The only way I think you really can appreciate these beauties is uh, from uh, in real life, basically, not from behind the screen. And this is a smaller body shell compared to this, but you see when I stand like this, and this is right next to me, and this is a bit smaller than that, so it kind of gives you an idea of how big these things are. And like I said before, they're not really light at all.
with this size and this scale, like one crash, it's over. So I have to be <laughs> very careful, especially with it not being four wheel drive, it's two wheel drive. So it's very twitchy. <laughs> like doing too many donuts just looks cool for the camera but uh, it, it really can destroy the the rear tires very quickly so uh, I try to avoid it but I just love the way it leaves tire marks and rubber marks on the road just like the rear th re real thing you can't resist almost it just really is so bad for the tires it destroys them completely so yeah hope you enjoyed it because it's probably gonna cost me <laughs> Perfect.